Hey fantasy fans, it's Dan here with Tree Beer Book Reviews, and I actually want to talk about an author I have begin to really enjoy, as you probably saw from the thumbnail, it's Neil Gaiman, and I really want to talk about these three books today. So, Norse Mythology, uh, The Graveyard Book, and The Oceans at the End of the Lane. So, let's get into it. All right, guys, so as you guys remember, you know, I've talked a lot about Neil Gaiman where I just, I didn't like his books. I didn't like American Gods. I didn't like Stardust. And I thought I'd kind of sworn off Neil Gaiman as an author where, you know, I was like, oh, maybe I just don't like him as an author. And it's just not someone I'm going to continue to read. And, you know, last month, or actually I believe it was in January, I picked up the Graveyard book right here. I actually have two copies of the Graveyard books. So this is a, an illustrated edition. It's absolutely gorgeous inside. It's, you know, fully illustrated. I'll show you some of the artwork. So there's this volume one and volume two. I got both of these actually for $10 off of Marketplace. So again, you guys, keep checking your Marketplace. You find some unreal books. So I listened to this on Audible, or sorry, not Audible. I listened to it through, uh, I think it was like through Libby, through my uh, my wife's uh, library app. And like I said, I'm not, I wasn't super keen on Neil Gaiman, and I saw this as like a full ensemble cast. I was like, whoa, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. And it's fantastic. This book completely changed my opinion on Neil Gaiman, where I, uh, you know, <laughs> I absolutely adored this book, and um, I highly recommend it. I absolutely, you know, I'm going to give maybe a little synopsis, so... You're following the story of Bod Evans, whose family at the beginning of the book is murdered, and he has to go seek refuge in a graveyard where he is protected and raised by the ghosts in the graveyard. And so you're following the adventures of Bod Evans, and you know you're looking into or you're exploring this mystery around his life and why he was murdered, and how significant Bod is, and the adventures Bod goes on and. The interesting ghosts and people he meets in his life, in his young life. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's full of all sorts of spooks and ghosties and ghoulies. And it's such an enjoyable uh, listen. I I found with Neil Gaiman that um, maybe the reading experience isn't as good as the listening experience. And, you know, just kind of like with Abercrombie and Stephen Pacey, where he's listening to, uh, you know, Neil Gaiman's books is a far superior way of you know enjoying his books i felt like this like i've been reading a little bit of this just to flip through it and like read it with my uh, not, i haven't been reading it with my kids because it is a little graphic in the first few pages i noticed so and they're only my kids are only young so yeah no i just it's it's far superior to listen to his uh, his audio audiobooks. This book was absolutely it's uh, I haven't given a rating for this book, so my rating for the graveyard book is S tier, absolutely stunning, one of my favorite books of the year so far in 2022. So glad I picked it up, so glad I listened to it, and I think it's definitely a book I'm gonna you know come back to and definitely read this illustrated edition. So next I picked up uh, the Ocean at the End of the Lane. Uh, by Neil Gaiman, obviously, and uh, this is, I listened to this again on, through the Libby app, and again, absolutely loved it, just, you know, loved, and he was narrated by Neil Gaiman himself, and man alive does that guy have such an amazing voice, and again, even though it wasn't a full cast ensemble narration, just, this narration brings so much life to his books, and like, you get these deeper meanings, and you get the, the emotional impact, and uh, this book was Again, absolutely excellent. Loved it. Just, and I like too that, you know, you, at least a little bit about the book, is, you know, you never really learn the name of the narrator. So you're almost, you know, put in place of the character and you're following the hemp stalks around and, uh, you know, dealing with Ursula Moncton and her family and like your family. And it's, it's so good. You just, you're dropped right in. And the, the, the ending is sad, but it's also kind of hopeful. And, you know, it kind of shows you how we all come full circle and how we change from adult to from child to adult and what we lose along the way. And um, it's an absolutely gorgeous book. Um, I was really, like, everyone said it was good. And uh, they were right. It's an absolutely fantastic book. Um, I'm not going to give this one an S tier. It's probably going to be Treebeard Seal of Approval. But, like, 
pretty high, like pretty high A tier. Absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, just beautiful, like absolutely beautiful book and beautiful narration. The last one I finished was Norse Mythology. So I, I listened to both um, uh, Ocean at the End of the Lane and Norse Mythology at the end of uh, March, just like back to back. I, I just, I couldn't uh, put them down. And uh, this is really good. This is just like a Norse retelling. Like I've read the Poetic Edas, or uh, Poetic Edas um, in Norse Mythology. I really enjoyed those. They're obviously a little bit more dense. The language is a little different. But I like what he's done here with this book where he's gone and, you know, just kind of, you know, added a more story element, a more modern kind of storytelling to these these North myths. And they're great. I enjoyed them so much more. Again, Neil Gaiman's narrating these books. That's so much fun with this. I um, I think with the Ocean at the End of the Lane and Norse Mythology, I think I listened to them both in, or yeah, both in like two days, like one after the other, because they're so good. They're so quick. Like I think Ocean at the End of the Lane is like six hours and Norse Mythology is about the same length. So um, if you can get them at your local library on like Scribed or um, Libby, just pick them up because they're fantastic. So Norse Mythology, just, you know, loved hearing the myths of like Loki and Odin and Thor and how all the... The, the Ragnarok monsters are like the children of Loki, like Yigd and sorry, like Fenrir and Jormungandr and Hell, and how they all like the gods are. <laughs> the gods are one of those like those entities in Norse mythology where they're that true. They're the true saying of you know a man often meets his destiny on the road trying to change it. <laughs> so all the things they're trying to do is like stop Ragnarok and their pursuit of stopping Ragnarok, they cause Ragnarok. So I really love this. This this is great. My friend gave me this uh, book and um, so glad he did. I'm so, you know, And you know, these books have breathed a new life for Neil Gaiman into me. I'm, I'm actually going to go back and pick up American Gods and read it. I have a copy somewhere downstairs. So I'm going to get back into that. I might even give that an audible uh, chance. I, I do have um, good omens I need to to read as well. So, and he's you know he wrote that with my favorite author Terry Pratchett. So I know I'm gonna love that. I watched the show Two Good Omens and I absolutely it was so amazing. It's so good uh, with Azarafail and um, oh, Crowley. Just and I love Michael Sheen and uh, you know David Tennant. They're absolutely amazing. But sorry, I didn't give a rating for Norse mythology. And again, Norse mythology is gonna be. Tribute Seal of Approval. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. A quick little video on Neil Gaiman. So, anyways, we'll see you next time. Cheers.